Let's hit some final thoughts to the epic battle of David and Goliath that we've been looking at this past week. Observation number one, giants are relentless. The giants in our life don't just come at us one time, they come at us over and over and over again. The giant of fear or worry or anxiety or whatever it is that you're facing, those things are relentlessly trying to intimidate us day after day after day. They come in the form of a, a pressure of a person, uh, the pressure of an addiction, pressure of worry, and they continue to yell at us across the valley of our soul, taunting us. Few things are more persistent and intimidating than the giants that taunt us, especially when we try to face them in our own strength. Observation number two, giants make us fearful and forgetful. So often when we face our own giants, we forget what we ought to remember and we remember what we ought to forget. You see, fear whispers to us that God's not big enough to take care of us. It tells us that we really aren't safe in His hands. Fear and faith have been battling for the human soul for a long time, and one or the other is going to win. Well, on this day, fear was winning uh, until a young shepherd boy shows up on the scene. 1 Samuel 17, 22 and 23 says, David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran into the battle lines, and greeted his brothers. And as he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. Now picture the moment in your mind. David's standing around, talking to his three brothers, when all of a sudden he hears the loud cry from the other side of the valley. And he looks across the valley and sees a giant of a man shouting out threats and cursing the God of Israel. David didn't get scared, and David wasn't frightened. David was mad. Observation number three, at some point in our lives, we have to realize that the giants in our lives are there to destroy us. They're there to rob us of all that God wants for our lives to become. I don't know what giant you're facing today, but until you get serious about it, until you realize what it's taking from you, you're never going to get victory over it. As long as a person tolerates a Goliath in their life, it's a matter of time before he begins to take over their life. He'll take their thoughts that are normally on God and he'll put them on himself. And as a result, you'll spend every waking moment thinking about whatever fear or anxiety you've got and the giant will control your life. Observation number four. God's more concerned with the person's availability than their ability. We look at our abilities. We look at our life and we say, I don't measure up. I can't do it. Understand this, God's working in your life has nothing to do with your abilities or your past. It has to do with a person who's willing to be used by God, who realizes they can't do it, but God can. If you could defeat the giant in your life solely on your own strength, you would have done it by now. But God wants us to admit that we're weak so he can show us how strong he is. 1 Corinthians 1.27 says, But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. The beautiful thing about this story is it's a perfect example of how God operates. We don't have to be beautiful or brilliant to be used by God. Look at me. We just have to be willing. David stood before this massive man, completely unintimidated. I wonder what God must think when he looks at us and says, my power is available to you. There's no one on this earth that's greater than me. Trust me. And yet we stay on the sidelines, afraid to step out, get in the game, and trust the Lord fully with our lives. Observation number five. Don't focus on the giant. Focus on your God. David's focus wasn't on the giant. David's focus was on God. What's your focus on today? Whatever gets your attention gets us. If your focus is on the giants in your life, then the giants will end up controlling you. But if your focus is completely on God, then God will control you. And that leads me to observation number six. We'll never fully understand how trustworthy God is until we place ourselves in a position to be completely dependent upon him. David walked out of that battlefield, but he didn't walk out alone. God was with him. When giants come into your life, you really have three choices. You can try to ignore it. You can try to act like they don't exist, but you know as well as I do that ignoring it won't make it go away. You can give up. Person who's given up makes up all kinds of excuses. They say things like, I can't do it. It's impossible. I tried before. It didn't work. This giant's just too big. I, I guess I'll have to live with it for the rest of my life. Or you can fight it. You can place your faith in God and trust him to fight the battle for you. Look at verse 47 again. 
Whose battle was it, according to David? The battle was God's. This weekend, we're starting a brand new series called Monsoon. In the first week of this series, we're looking at the monsoon of fear. I hope that you won't miss it. You can live stream it. You can check us out on Facebook. You can use Roku TV. You can use the Sagebrush app. You can get us on Apple TV. But services will be all through Saturday and all through Sunday. Share the link, invite a friend, and let's pack the place online for Monsoon. I'll see you then.